Hi, okay, and we are so live. So, online. welcome to ISIS Hangouts. Today we had a little technical trouble, so we are starting a bit late, uh, but now we are up and rolling. So, uh, ISIS is the International Special Events Society. We have chapters worldwide. You can find us at ISIS.com. Uh, if you work in special events or want to get in the event industry, we are a good bunch of people to know, and we're very friendly and we love to help. So I'm Jay Harmer. I'm a director with ISIS Vancouver. I am joined today by the director of ISIS Vancouver. I <laughs> I'm going to mute because there's madness going on in her background. Uh, uh, Emily McDonald is the VP of Communications for ISIS Vancouver. Uh, we have Tanya Newman. She is the former president of ISIS Vancouver. And Shayla Gabriel, who is representing our recent graduate and student contingent. She's a former graduate. She's a recent graduate of the Art Institute's event management program. Uh, right. So today we are going to talk about contingency, which is one of my favorite topics. Uh, if you want to talk back to us, if you want to send us comments or questions, you can send them into hangouts at isisvancouver.com. You can also comment on Twitter using the hashtag ISIS Hangouts. Uh, in addition to that, you can also comment on the, uh, the Google Plus page. And so hopefully one of us will be uh, monitoring a variety of these threads and we will be able to get back to you and answer your questions. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, so contingency is a broad scope topic and this uh, for me fits into all aspects and I really think is a good continuation of our conversation regarding risk management and relationship management. So I think that th this is one of the sort of the core skills that we need as 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 event managers and uh, and so that I'm really excited about talking about that today. So so let's get started and and I want to just open a general uh, a general question out to the panel. And I just want to talk about what contingency means in regards to the event industry. Like sort of what what is it what does it mean to us? <laughs> well, it's, so uh, where do we use it? Like where do we where do we well how does it fit into our bigger picture? Where does contingency yeah, fit? Into? It's the space that we give ourselves to um, accommodate for change, basically. Yeah. So it's it's to um, allow for whether the client's changing, whether something is changing with the weather, the venue, anything. It's allowing um, pre-planning for possible change. I, I think that's great. Any, any Tanya, Emily, you guys want to you want to add to that? It's also allowing for um, last-minute factor things that you didn't think of, things that. That, that happened, like change is definitely one, but anything also um, that you didn't factor in and that you didn't think of so that you have that contingency factor to make sure that you're able to accommodate um, the last minute, oh my god, I totally didn't think of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and those and those come from a variety of places. So there's, so we've got we've got last we've got last minute uh, modifications to the event. We've got and and the landscape. Uh, we have we have changes where clients say like, you know what? Can we actually get bows on all of the whatever the thing is? And then where where else do we use it? Where else does it fit in? Your budget. Nobody? Your budget. Oh, look into there's, there's Shane Shane Bozer has joined us. I'm just gonna bring him up. And uh, so hopefully we'll have a smoother technological time. So, so Shane, we we've already we've already started, but we're going to try and bring you in here. So we're today we're talking about contingency. Uh, Shane Bowser is with Salmon's Rentals. He is a, he is an ISIS member, and he's been good enough to join us today. So we're talking about contingency, and we actually just literally started. The the part that we are uh, we're just talking about sort of where it fits in with the event industry and, and what what Corrine had contributed. Corrine was saying that that it's it helps us deal with change. Tanya was saying that it, it helps us deal with with uh, sort of last minute additions. Where where else does contingency fit in our event plans? Well, I think it, you know if you if you look at um, at your event with an overall sort of risk assessment, I mean contingency needs to be built uh, into that sort of every step of the way. Uh, depending on the size of the event, of course, but you know we look at contingency, and it's something that we deal with a lot, uh, being in the tenting world, particularly with the uh, the weather that we get. Uh, people are always looking for a backup plan to make sure that their bases are covered, bases are covered. Um, mm. Uh, yeah. So, so the other, so the other, the other one that I want to that I want to add into into that list is mistakes, and we use we use contingency to smooth out, you know, and and that that comes into change, that comes into last minute stuff where we where we've overlooked a thing, 
and there, there may be like turf issues or there may be you know just the, 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 there may be a place where we need to, to, to magically make a thing appear and and it was because somebody screwed up and yeah. uh, and so that that is that is absolutely the you know I think that's a really good sort of sort of layout so so um, is anybody uh, so if we're gonna tie this into sort of I mean Shane you mentioned risk management so how does it really how does contingency and risk management fit together well in you know in our in our world, they're, they're sort of one and the same. They're certainly interchangeable. Um, we deal, like I said, depending on the size of the event, and like you say, uh, we try to guard against mistakes or if other suppliers are involved and mistakes are made, you know, what's the backup plan in the event that, that something goes wrong or something is not the way that the customer uh, or the client uh, would like it to go? Um, and, you know, so, so we look at them, uh, you know, as the same, essentially. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for for you guys, they're pretty much interchangeable. So, um, so I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw the next one at Kareen. Kareen, what are what are the mistakes we're safeguarding against? What are we trying to like? If we're just talking about in the mistake realm, like what are where where do things get screwed up that we need to sort of pave over using what we have for contingency? Um, it, it's often just um, expectations, um, like or communications where something hasn't been clear up front. Um, you can sometimes. You know, if you haven't done the proper site visits up front, or you haven't really mm -hmm. figured out what you're walking into, and you're like, yeah, 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 I know that space, and then you're like, I uh, don't, you know. So um, it can be for things like that, it's, and it could be just for um, just again customer expectations if they've just sort of expected something different, and somehow along the line your communications um, hasn't been completely clear. So then you need sort of the contingency for that, um, and then sometimes a lot if you're working in custom, like we do a lot of custom builds. And sometimes we're guessing up front how much things are going to cost or how much time it's going to take, and then you get into it and and you don't. So you have to sort of build that build that into your budget up front and into your plan for time, both time and for money. Because um, a lot of times we'll do we'll make sure that we have anything custom built two days in advance, so that gives us a time if need changes need to be made that we still have the time to do it and then also the money. Yeah. Oh, I, th I think there's some. I think you made some great points in there. Um, where the uh, yeah where where the and, and communication is a huge place you know especially if uh, like not on the not necessarily on the operational side but definitely on the client management side where it's like you know they they expected it was going to be this and then it is exactly. it's the the unfortunate job of the operation side to try and make that thing magically now fit whatever the the middle ground is that you've hit and so that it's really important on the operational side to have that. Um, so, so you sort of touched on a couple of uh, a couple of a couple of points there. So, for what uh, what different areas where we incorporate contingencies? So, so you said financial, and you said time. Where where else do we build them into our into our into our projects? Uh, we do it for people as well. So we'll overbook um, staff, say for larger installs, um, because you have people that won't show up, get sick, whatever. So we sometimes do that as well. It's better to have a few extra people and cut people early. Um, then you know not have enough people or then overwork your team because somebody else didn't show up yeah what about uh, what about Shane, Shane and Tanya what about you guys what do you uh, what do you guys have what, what else do you you, uh, you you work in your contingency so you got financial we got labor we got time is there anything else we put in there uh, for me it's a it's a basically a backup plan plan B um, if we have to order things overseas or products that you know, those kinds of things can, where we have almost no control over a boat coming in from China or something like that, I try to make sure that I have a backup plan to the best of my ability um, right. to make right. sure that, you know, that if, if the shipment doesn't come in, we have um, another option. Right. For it to, to still deliver on the client season. I think that's awesome. What, what, what about you, Shane? Um, you know, I, I'll echo the, the comments that Kareem made. I mean, we're, sort of, we're, we're in the same boat with, with respect to staffing. Um, obviously, uh, on a lot of the larger installs, the festivals, the corporate events that we do, um, you know, overworking our guys is something that can happen very easily if we if we end up not staffing it properly. Um, which at the end, you know, at the end of the day, costs money. Um, we've made uh, a, a real effort to keep the communication lines um, with the client wide open all the way through, and, and keeping them abreast of the cost as it builds. So at the end of the day. They're not in, they don't end up with, with a large bill and suffer sticker shock and back away from the event. Um, and you know, as we when we acquired Apex uh, back in the spring, was something we needed to do more of because people really have no concept of how much uh, tents cost, let alone the stuff that goes underneath them. So when they come to you with a sort of a fifteen thousand dollar budget but have fifty thousand dollar expectations, 
um, we've been able to close a lot more business by discussing cost up front uh, and communicating with them what's involved in order to, to, to have their vision come you know come to fruition uh, which for us has resulted in a lot less headaches on the operational side um, and a lot less uh, overworking of my guys Right, right, and I, I think that those are are great points. Is that you know investing investing more in your communication structure with your clients yeah. is is just pay off on the well, back end. Well, you're 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 either going to do it up front or you're going to do it in the end. And if you do it in the end, you end up you know looking like you don't know what you're yeah. doing, and yeah. it's really yeah. tough to go back to a client after you've quoted on something and said, oh by the way, um, I was off by forty percent on my cost and time needed to put this together. Um, and and unfortunately in our industry, there's the, we suffer a lot of that. And um, we, we've really tried to rise above that and, and make it very clear to the client that here's what's involved, here's what the costs are, and here's what you can expect. Um, and we find that it's much easier to sort of follow the, the close of the sale all the way through, and, and everybody you know gets what they want out of it. Nice. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I, and actually, I'm just going to the next topic. Um, oh, one, actually, one of. So in regards to contingency, so we've covered a lot of a lot of bases there. I actually I have a question for I'm gonna start with Tanya. Do you ever throw extra chair covers in? When somebody Always. says I need a hundred, do you throw an extra Yeah, how Always. how many extra? Like how many extra in a hundred do you usually? Um, a hundred is usually five to ten, because um, they always forget about random this or that or yeah, or yeah. Just so like five, bases. there's your five five to ten percent contingency. Yeah. What about ten? What what about uh, Shane? Sorry. And what about you and tenting? Are you ten by ten on the truck when your clients, you know, rented a giant pile of three by forties or? No, I mean, we, we've always got extra pipe and extra fabric um, with us. Um, you know, right. pipes get bent. You know, stuff happens. So there's always oh, a little bit more. Yeah. And, you know, same with, with tables and chairs and linen. You know, we always send, uh, you know, a, a couple of more depending. But, again, you know, what we've really we, – we've tried to eliminate that by having the clear communication up front. Right. Um, and we've instituted sort of a cutoff policy 48 hours ahead of the event. Uh, there's no more um, additions or subtractions without, you know, sort of a significant fee. Nice. Um, and we found that has weeded people out from changing their mind, adding another table of ten, you yeah. know, doing all this stuff that that irritates uh, you know everybody on this call today. Um, <laughs> and we we have found that you know by setting the the expectation with the clients on what's what's acceptable practice with us at Salmon's Apex has really limited the need for sending out more stuff or being caught shorthanded on a job site. It's yeah. not to say that it doesn't happen; it certainly does. But you know, we can control a lot of that at our end. Well, I think you know where where you where you you know you give you give clients the ability to change their mind, but it comes at a fee, right? Like that, like it's, it's, it's we will we will totally bring you whatever it is you want. But yeah. now that you've called us six hours before your show, it we are going to have to throw resources at it, and so are yeah. you. Yeah, and and absolutely. so I've let Emily just sort of hide quietly in the background. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can get her to no. Okay, she's busy. All right. So, no, it's just there. very loud here. <laughs> okay. What is well, going on? So much contingency. There's all this contingency <laughs> being built over the world works. Uh, so uh, let's see. Where where are we? Are, uh, is that greenscape being loud over there? Okay, so we're gonna mute Emily. Emily's muted herself. That's good. Okay, so uh, so Shane Shane touched on uh, uh, how it the by building including contingency into into his operational plan, he is preserving client relationships. So what is, what is it? What else are we protecting? We said we said we're protecting our labor from getting burnt out, which is really important, right? Like these are the people you depend on. So we got labor. What else are we what else are we protecting? Well, our reputation in the industry, right? Like exactly Absolutely. what Shane was saying too, right? Like it's it's you want to look like you are thinking about everything up front versus just problem solving on the end. I mean, every client will appreciate problems being solved, but they will appreciate you more if you're able to think about everything up front and then it's a smooth, hassle-free process versus and you've got the time, money, space to do what you need to do without them even having to know about it versus you having to scramble and then hand them a big fat bill at the end. Right. Right. Perfect. Uh, so what else what else is at stake? Yeah, that or one large one. Well I think it's your else? brand your brand as well, right? I mean it, it, and it goes hand in hand with your yeah. reputation, but your, your brand is definitely at least from our end, I mean we're we're working hard to build a, a reputation and a brand. And yeah. um, if you can show up on site and have it executed the way you laid it out, uh, not to say there's not going to be issues that come up that you have to deal with on the fly, but if you can minimize that, your brand goes a long, long way, particularly in this city. Absolutely. 
Uh, I, I'd also, Tanny, do you want to do you want to do you want anything to that? Um, so we got reputation, well, we got brand. Everything. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, this, I agree. In this industry, that's all you've got for the most right. part: your reputation well, and your brand. There's also the bottom line, right? Like we're also using this to protect our bottom line, to not only make sure that 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 we are going to be able to make money on the show that we're doing, but also making sure we're going to be able to make money on future shows. And that, and I think I think Shane's point about you know how you set this expectation with your clients that that you will just service the heck out of them, and that but you know when you when you change your mind that there are things that go along with that, and when you control that expectation, you really you you will have a much healthier relationship. I think. So I think those those are all those are all I'm really important that things that we need to protect. Um, so so what do you guys think are some basic principles of of how we build contingency into our, into into like labor and and financial? Like how do how do you guys sort of like what is there math that happens? Is there are you do you throw dice? Do you consult a fortune teller? You know, is it the horoscope? How do you decide sort of how do you make these decisions? Wow, well, it's just <laughs> Very quiet. So, uh, okay, so, well, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll answer that because it's something that we yeah. do uh, on a daily basis. Uh, you know, we, we look at a job uh, when it comes in, uh, once it's been signed off and confirmed. Uh, we look at the amount of equipment involved, we, and we just we work it backwards from the amount of guys that are involved, the amount of trucks, the amount of man hours. You know, it's not an exact science, but it certainly gives us a good gauge on how to price the labor yeah. on that job. Uh, we also look at the clients that we're working with and the staff members that we have. I mean, a lot of our staff members, um, when we when we brought together uh, both of our, our workforces from Salmon's and Apex, had re uh, relationships with, with certain big customers. So we make sure that some of those lead guys are on hand because if there are issues that that go along uh, with that job, they're there to handle it, which trickles down, meaning I don't have to pay somebody else to go out and fix a mistake. If I've got somebody that knows what they're doing, the mistake is covered. Um, and we can usually get it down to sort of within 5 to 10% uh, costing, um, which it does take some work, but when you sort of look at it as a, at a whole picture and you look at all the suppliers that are involved, and that's key. I mean, we look at all the suppliers we work with, and we really had to trim down who we work with because you got to make sure you work well with the same people and you're on the same page. Uh, that, and you know we're just a, a cog in the wheel uh, at an event, right? We reckon we recognize that there's other people there, so we really uh, part of our contingency is making sure that we line up suppliers um, and we understand how we all work together uh, to ensure that you know at the end of the day the customer's getting what they want and they're getting good value for what they're paying for. For sure, and there and I and actually I think you, you, you sort of touched on another good point there is that one of the you know being being a, being a cog in the machine that you. You know, one of the other things you protect against is either errors by one of one of the partner companies who are involved, or even just like uh, incorrect assumptions that they've made. Because yeah. sometimes, you know, that they will they will say like, "Oh yeah, well, there's tents coming in, so surely they're going to have some kind of thing that we can rig up on inside the tent," and that's not necessarily yeah. the case. Yeah, yeah. And we run into that problem a lot. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it's just the. I'm, I'm sure it is a. It is a. It is a nigh daily experience for you guys. Mm -hmm. Uh. So what? Uh, how about uh, how about Ukraine? What do you what do you think? So what do you well, like? Is there is how do you is there math involved when you add that extra labor, or do you do you just sort of eyeball it and go like, eh, maybe you know it's one more person. Uh, we have four people. Let's add one more person. Yeah, I'm for when I'm doing it on the sales side and up front, it's pure math. Um, yeah. um, and I'll go through because a lot of it's really what what can I afford on the contingency side within the budget. So it's pretty scientific um, and so then and same with the timelines like you can kind of that's pretty mathematical like this needs to be done this many days we make the whole you know critical path for everything and so it's fairly scientific um, and then beyond that then I sort of leave it to my team because it may be like so my operations manager will do more on the the, the feeling or the uh, I just it would make me feel better if right so then she'll yeah. add contingency um, uh, she'll be a, a second layer of sort of risk management contingency planning by looking at the event knowing the venue perhaps a bit better knowing the team members that she has well these two people work really well together so we could do it faster these two people mm -hmm. uh, should probably send another person they're not as experienced so she will sort of really do it on the more soft goods that I'm offering and do it on yeah. the the people skills and sort of looking it on that way to build the contingency in um, or just knowing that yes, it should be easy to do this, but when we work with say this lighting company, we put everything down and then they they, we, they move all of our stuff and we have to redo it. So we sort of know, like Shane said, with the other event partners, um, that's why we like to know who we're working with and who we work well with and who perhaps we have to 
know that we're going to be there a bit longer. Again, so we don't even book the next job after too close so, to, to um, so do that. When you're guessing about contingency, so we're saying that it's partly math and it's partly gut. And I, I love this. I love this idea. So, so what do you what what percentage do you think it is? Is it like eighty percent math, twenty percent gut? You know, I would say mash? yeah. For me, for us, it's it's pretty. It's I would say it's like a seventy-five twenty-five. Like seventy-five. 75 like we very like. I would say maybe two orders out of. You know, maybe a one percent order that, like, like, like maybe two orders in a year, we would ever go back and say, oh, you know, this isn't working out for the budget we had planned. Otherwise, because we do it up front, it's so important for us. Um, and then even that twenty-five percent on the contingency planning that we're doing, it's really, it's something that the client wouldn't even notice. It's just us building that buffer, and it might take away yeah. from our profit, or it might do okay. from that. But See? it's something to make our easier for our team. So I might choose to buy a new tool to build something. Just because you know it'll make things faster and easier for my team, not necessarily more cost effective. Right, right. So that and that's and that's that's just good project planning where you're you know sort of you're making making assessments about like what you can do to be, to benefit your business to make it easier for you to deploy later in the future. Exactly. So I, I think that's a really good point there. So so uh, Tanya, what about you? When you're when you're doing contingency, what percentage is math and what percentage is gut feeling? <laughs> um, well, in in my world, you know, unlike. Um, I'm not dealing with the big builds and the big installations and the, you know sort of the more risk factor that you know Salmon's Apex and uh, and Greenscape would be dealing with due to the size of their installations and the multiple labor aspects. Um, with that's a, a lot of it too. It, there's a lot of gut involved, a lot of knowing because we deal with a lot of venues. Um, it's knowing our venues very very well because nice. they can put many wrenches into your plan based on. Right. when they're ready for you. So if the banquet room isn't ready and they tell you to come at 2 but they're not ready till noon then it all comes into you know I have to pay my staff more and you know and then the snowball effect of that. So okay. knowing that said venue is never ready at noon will always show up at 2. A lot of it is simply just knowing who where we're going and who we're working with for sure. So for you guys, it's a there's a lot there's like a higher percentage of gut where it's like you have yes. history with the venue and so you'll go like is it like fifty fifty you figure is that like sort of where the ratio is? I, it's probably even higher. Um, really interesting. Just because, like I said, like we're dealing with essentially two products, so yep. and they could be you know huge amounts. So we've got yep. you know event for thirteen hundred and event for twenty two hundred oh, yeah. coming up. Yep. So. We, I know the venues, I know them well, and I know how to operate around them. Those will yeah. have more multiple aspects to them, um, yeah. but for the most part, it is. It's it really is knowing where we're going and and how they operate because they they have to start before we can begin. Nice, nice. I think I, that's excellent. Thank you. So what what about you, Shane? Just uh, what do you think? The, where do you think the line is for you guys? Is it? Is uh, it for most... us, it's 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 mostly math. I mean, it's ninety percent math, right? Yeah. Because. You can only put a tent up in so many spots in this city. Uh, we've put a tent up in just about all of them many times. So yeah. you, you know the venue. Um, on an internal venue where we're delivering tables, chairs, and dishes, um, yeah. you know that, that, the, the math there is a lot easier to run because it's just a drop delivery and off you go, unless, of course, we're setting it up. Um, yeah. But it, it is 90% it is math uh, on our end for sure. Nice. Yeah, for, I think for me, uh, as a production manager, I think it's probably 80-20. I think maybe 85-50. Maybe um, so I think that that's a really great spectrum that we we have represented here of the you know that this is this is the way we build these things in. Uh, so what should we uh, so uh, so here's a here's a question. So how many of you guys conceal the ex how many of you expose the existence of contingency to your clients? We do 100 percent. 100 percent. So yeah, what is Tanya? What about you? Oh yeah, I always let them know we bring extra, and yeah. you know, the more transparent you are about things, the less hassle you're going to have in the long run. Really? Your clients, okay. your clients. I mean, with certain things, but for the most part, your your clients need to know. It's just better. The, 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 you know, if you hide something, that's when it comes back to blow you, to blow up in your face. Absolutely. Green, how about you? Do you show Do you show your whole hand? Um, it would. It depends. Um, yeah. It depends on the because we do we we're not we don't just do event um, production so it depends on some with some clients it's laid right out what it is and it's it's a built in like for our larger projects or per, like a lot of our permanent sales so it's in there and if we don't use it then it's then we take it off the bill 
um, with for um, with our rentals, it's more it's built in. It's the, us bringing like like Tanya will bring the extra stuff. So we let you know sometimes we're dealing with tight budets. And it's like if we're taking a truck up to Whistler, I'm not going to send it half empty. So I will give them extra stuff, and I will you know because then, that, then that's for me. That's the contingency. I can't drive back in time for their event mm -hmm. if they're short or they change their mind. So if it's out of town and it's location, then I'll be sending extra stuff guaranteed, even if they don't use it, just to make sure that if they choose to use it or they want it, I that, think, I that think we have it. I think I've actually I have been on the receiving end of a truck of yours in Whistler, and there has been, uh, I think there has been stuff tucked in the back, which yeah. we have undoubtedly gone back for. Exactly. Uh, and so, so for me, as a as a production manager, I just want to I want to speak of this. I don't show my cards. I when when I I will have I will have resources which are are hit. I will have for me. I'll have contained the budget where I'll have percentage where I say that you know we need to tack them on. But I will hi, I will totally bring extra resources and I won't tell anybody. And uh, and and that is so that I have the ability to magically put out fires as we go and that the client. Isn't sort of looking for a way to sort of burn because if what I had found, and I don't know if you guys have had similar experience, but I mean obviously we're all coming from different perspectives. Uh, where is if my client knew that I had six extra tables on the truck, as soon as we unloaded the truck, they would find a place for those six extra tables, oh, yeah. and then they would come up to me an hour later and say, "Do you have that they had ordered?" And then when they come up to me later and say, do you have any tables, I'd say, well, you know, I, we did bring some extra. And so th that, for me, is product to manage expectation with clients. That is the approach that I would take. So I would totally, I would totally hide stuff. We, uh, I mean, we, we use it as a, as a, as a value-added service. I mean, when, when customers are coming to us, um, you know, to book a large-scale job, whether it be a wedding, corporate event, uh, you know, what have you, and they're spending 50, 60, you know, upwards of $100,000, uh, we sit down with them and we go through it in very detail of, you know, what you get when you hire us, and part of it is a contingency plan. I mean, we, we try to plan for everything we can within reason. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I see Emily on the screen there. I mean, we did a job with, with Lounge Works back in the summer that uh, we, we completely <laughs> Pardon my friend. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and do some bleeping now. And, uh, and, and I mean, it was, it was one of those things that, 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 that did get overlooked. So I'm not sitting here telling you that contingency will save your, your rear end every time, but uh, we have found that for customers that are coming in to spend money, and it doesn't matter you know, what they're doing, uh, if we let them know that we're ready to, to tackle anything that may come at us uh, by way of extra preparation, uh, what have you, um, that is a huge value-added service, and I would recommend to everybody on this call that you start selling it as part of your package because it shows to the customer that you're actually ahead of the curve. You're not waiting for stuff to fall in your lap to try and fix it, um, and letting them know that it's there. Uh, customers are going to worry on site. I mean, we we've gone. We just did a job at Cap Ridge. I must have done 40 uh, site inspections um, right up, and it was an overnight install, and it was a very uh, very difficult thing to do. But we got it done. And the customer wanted to know the minute I got there if I'd got the last, you know, 40 revisions that came through an hour before I got there. Uh, and we did, right? Yeah. But you sell that as part of your package and as, as, as part of your service of dealing with your respective company. Uh, we have found that it goes a long way, and it sets you apart from everybody else in the business. I, I mean, I, I think that's good advice because, you know, having been on the on the other side of the relationship with that Shane speaks of where you know where I would where I would be working with actually as a matter of fact Apex Tents and and dealing with uh, at the time it was Noah and he was uh, the one that made all the mistakes we've never made any mistakes yeah right okay sorry um, yeah. the, the idea of being managed in that fashion where you know where it's, yeah. where it's been made clear to me that that there is you know that this is this is this is the lay of the land and so I, I think that there I think there's really I think there's some really good advice there I think I'm just going to jump in for a second. I think yeah, as please. a as a supplier, um, you know, as, as opposed to a production manager or an event producer or however you want to call it, it, it is like like what Shane said. It is important for you to be transparent and lay most of your cards on the table because you you are the third or fourth person on the totem pole. So you've got the client, then there's the event producer in between, and so you're dealing with the event producer and you're trying to make the, the event producer look good because they've chosen to work with you as opposed to the, you know, the client can basically give a rat's ass about you know where that stuff is coming from because at the end of the day it's all going to fall on the shoulders of the event producer because you've chosen to work with that company. So I think by being more transparent to the best of your ability, maybe not every card, like Shane said, you provide that value add and you provide that, you know, that level of, all right, 
you know, if we if we if we go up or down by five or ten, you know, she's got it covered because they always bring more or they always have their you know bases covered or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you know, I'm I'm obviously I'm going to be biased and say that I, it's it is lovely when when the when the suppliers are really open about the sort of the extra the extra resources that they have available. So I'm I'm purely speaking as a production manager. That, that that I you know I, I will totally hide resources and not and not tell <laughs> the end client. So uh, so the, so I want to just I want to move this forward. Uh, so so this so let's see here. So we've talked about a bunch of of sort of components for building contingency. Now do we do we do we want to say that this is a multi-layered thing that we use all of these these methods on our, you know in in an event as part of our budgeting and planning process we incorporate contingency in our labor in our supplies that we need to bring uh, in our do we do we do we build that in as a whole thing I think so Yeah me we too do. we do Yeah where it's like it's a multi contingency is a multi-layered Grease for the machine is the way that I look at it. Is that Tanya with Kareen? What do you guys think? Absolutely. If you don't build it in, that's when you're going to blow up in your face. All right. Uh, what about what about I want to talk a, I want to talk a little specifics about um, sort of budgeting, uh, budgeting for both money and time. How do you guys? When you're trying to figure out how long something's going to take, and this is this is definitely uh, this is one that is actually particularly good for Kareem because she does work in the custom builds. Um, when you're trying to figure out like how long it's going to take to get a component from an, from a, a supplier upstream, or how long you guys are going to build it, how much how much contingency do you add for time and scheduling? How much of a pad do you allow yourself? You said I think you might have said two days. Um, that's yeah, that's for that's for in-house things. So that'll be for something that we're sort of constructing here with our own team. Um, I for when we're importing stuff, it has to be longer. Or I will. It depends what the client needs because sometimes they'll be working with film or TV where it's got to be right away, and then they have to pay for the guaranteed expedited shipping, which can triple the cost. A million dollars. Yeah. yeah. So it can. It depends because. I can. I will absolutely give zero guarantee if I'm putting it on a truck and bringing it in, and then the client knows that. And it's like, then you will get it when you get it because there's certain things that I can't do to make, you know, shipments clear, customs fast. I mean, I can. Mm -hmm. There's as much I can. You know, there's a lot I can do up front. You but can always throw money at the problem. I can throw money at the problem. I can go stand at the border myself. I can clear it myself. I've and I've done that before. I, I've had to go to the airport and sit there at the you know waiting for the plane to land when you're looking so when you're doing it in house you say two days when you're clearing customs you know if somebody says it's going to be here it's going to it's going to be here in a week you you assume they're going to be another week off is that uh, uh, yeah anything i'm importing i i have it's it's 10 business days for sure right i've right. got yeah. trucks that will get you here add in 3 on days top of but whatever they tell you i'll oh, yeah, cuz they're always wrong, wrong. Yeah, like, I, I know for the different shipping companies, like different shipping companies, that, I, that, that I can get it more reliably. But sometimes, again, out of your control, uh, we have to always check and follow up from the company that's shipping in the first place, because sometimes it sits in their warehouse, or it took them a while to find the box, or they, you know, are backlogged, or it's they're rushed, you know. So it, it sometimes it may not even leave their warehouse when you think it's leaving. So there's a lot of like my team has been thoroughly trained to. You know, follow up for when it's actually left their warehouse, like the, our yeah. supplier's warehouse, because sometimes it'll sit there for a week and then you're there's nothing you can do about it, right? So, or there's even times it's been winter and like Christmas time, we've had we've been importing, um, you know, twenty foot Christmas trees, and the truck's broken down in Montana and there's nothing. I can do about it. Like yeah. it's weather. No, the no amount of willing that truck to move is going to get no. it to you any sooner. Yeah, and so then we've had it's just like, you know, there's nothing we can do. We can get a real one. There's like there's other options we can, you know, we come up like for us our always our backup options always real. So it's like okay, well I can't get the fake one, but I can get you the real one. And what bush right now? So <laughs> go to Richmond. <laughs> yeah, go to Richmond. <laughs> so 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 that was so so if somebody tells you it's going to be there on the 17th, then you would tell your client that you're going to get it sometime between the 24th and the 27th. Yeah, is that, probably. Is, is that math right? Is that what I, yeah. I get that right? 
yeah, yeah. For, for shipping. And then if you if you do your if you do your estimations and you think it's going to be done on the 24, then you you tell your client you can have it out the door on the 26. Yeah. Yeah. I think those are great. Those are great numbers. Um, Tanya Chain, what about you guys? What do you what about uh, um, for for more for for more uh, more product based? How do you guys like if you send out Shane, how about this? Do you ever do you ever send out tent walls to get to get deckled? No. Oh, okay. No, and actually, to, you know, to how we've handled the product side, uh, and again, looking at it from a risk management standpoint, um, we don't buy anything out of China or India or anything out of overseas. Uh, anything anything we buy uh, comes from the states, right? Because the shipping's much uh, quicker. Uh, it's easier to track. Sure. I know the warehouses where they're coming from. You know, I've, I've been there. We we several with customers. Um, so this is our way of controlling sort of any missteps along the way. I.e., a boat from China hasn't made it, it hasn't cleared customs. The rest of that crap that you that you've got no control over. We decided that you know we were going to take control or as much as we could over that situation and use North American suppliers. Um, and you know you pay a little bit more, but at the end of the day, you know we're not. I'm not here to, to try and make my money back out of that product on the first trade. We know we've got to amortize it over a certain amount of time. Yeah. Uh, so we'll pay a little more, give our clients the the, the, the peace of mind that it's just coming from over the border. Uh, and if we can go there in Washington State, we can drive down and pick it up. We need we need to rush order, which we've done typically. But everything else that we buy comes out of the states uh, for for the exact reason that Kareen highlighted is you know you're, you're at the mercy of the shipping companies, you're at the mercy of customs, and that's nothing you can control. Yeah. So we've decided to, to take control of that back by by using North American suppliers. Right, mm -hmm. and 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 it, there's and I think it's really I wish we could, I wish we had more time because we could really the, the, so the, the companies that we have represented today we have greenscapes and they handle uh, they handle a lot of greens and decor that is in the, in the green realm we have salmon salmon salmon's apex salmon salmon and apex represented by shane and salapex salapex uh they handle uh, apex is one of the uh if not the premium tent supplier around this neck of the woods uh they do tenting they do staging and then salmon's uh presents an entire um, flotilla of event support, and they they're they're they are chairs, tables, you name it. So they've got this huge, large infrastructure item, and then we also uh, Tanya represents chair decor, and they do this very like fine, high detail, delicate work in regards to linens and fabric, and that there is this. Um, it's just there's such a really unique landscape that we have represented here, where you guys all have sort of different needs with the product that you provide, and where you know the you know if if, if Shane's Shane's tent poles can be a little dirty, whereas <laughs> Tanya's stuff has to be immaculately dry cleaned down to the fiber, you know. So there's there's this really interesting landscape here. So it's really cool that we're getting both Kareen's uh, perspective and, and Shane's in regards to product and and suppliers, and, and we're totally going to tackle that. Another day, uh, what, Tanya? Do you wanna do you wanna do you wanna chime in on this? Just what Shane said, and but both Kareen said that's it's smart and wise to have uh, you know a variety of suppliers that you're purchasing from um, in in different locations. I mean, we obviously you know do use uh, China suppliers, but I also have local people that I can go to, um, and and people out of the states as well, so that we sort of have our hands in a few different pots because right. you don't always have those lead times, and you don't you don't always have six months to wait for a boat from China. Um, so it's important to not put all your eggs in one basket and to make sure that you have um, different areas that you can reach into to be able to support. Because everything is last minute nowadays. You don't have those lead times like you did once upon a time. So, if you're, you know, if you're working from six months backwards, then you're going to lose out on a lot. Nice. Thank you. And and it did did I malign anyone's company there? Did I did I pretty much give a good give good coverage there? I like the I'm word quite flotilla. Happy, quite happy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so the uh, let's see here. So so we've I mean we've covered such such great. Oh, that, I know what I want to talk about. So, uh, in regards to to getting down to some of the math, so we talked a little bit about the scheduling. What about on the financial end? Do you guys include a line in your budgets that say contingency? You know, nine percent. Uh, no. Is, is any, no. 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 I mean, we we build we build it in. We're very transparent, but it, it doesn't show up as contingency. Yeah. I mean, our contingency is extra labor, extra bodies. Yep. Um, you know, extra gear. Uh, if I've got a if I've got to move more than one or two truckloads, uh, you know that gets billed. And it's all—they're all—it's all a line item, but it all falls under uh, the contingency plan. Right, right. Uh, 
Uh, Kareem, Tanya, same for you guys? Um, and it's mostly labor and extra stuff. It's from, from, I mean, once again, I don't have the, the items that, the, that Corrine and Shane do, so you, you're kind of limited as to how much you can build in, but we have two or three different areas that we make sure we've got our bases covered in terms of, uh, once again, knowing what's going to happen on the other end. Sure. What are, uh, Kareen? Uh, most of our rentals, it's sort of, it's, it's built in, um, but a lot of our... I um, mean, a lot of the contracts we're working with when we're doing um, they have their construction contracts, and you absolutely have to show it as a separate line item. It's it's just part of the the structure. So we have different styles of contracts right. um, for the different clients. Like it's like when you're responding, like when you're dealing, you have to do progress draws and things like that. So there's different billing and and yeah. things. So definitely for all those types of projects, 100%, it's right in there. And then if they've used that contingency, I can add it again. So it's it. Um, you know, it, it's happened like we've been on on site in Edmonton, and because they're they're like, yeah, 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 come. Like we confirmed on the the Friday, our flights left on Monday, and we showed up on you know Monday morning, and they weren't ready for us, and so we unloaded our truck, and I was like, okay, great. So, <laughs> you know, now here's here's your bill, and um, we're you know we'll be back in a week. So, um, and if we're delayed again, then there's going to be another penalty. Like I even put penalties and stuff like that on yeah. ours if we need to. So I'm um, right. so yeah. And, those are, so and that's sort of work. That's working in the realm of change orders as being sort of the, your additions to your contingency, where the contingency. Yeah, because contingency is a organic it's, it's thing a, that develops. It's a bit for both. Like I mean, if there's things that I've massively underestimated or didn't think of, that's my own mm -hmm. fault. If there's things that it's their changing and what they're doing is going to cause the problem, then absolutely that's when. Um, you know, then that be that becomes a matter of that th they'll take the responsibility to an extent for that. Right. Uh, I'm just going to speak from the from the production manager point of view. Um, so when when ad developing budgets as an event manager, it is totally fair to add a contingency line item. And for me, I usually I usually will start the bidding around nine percent, and I will add that in as like just it just says right above the subtotal of what the entire event costs. I will have a line that says contingency, and it will be a 9%, and it'll say, this is to account for the fact that things are going to change as we develop this event. And so I will build that as part of my budgeting structure. Um, and obviously, it is it is quite different um, for the realm that we're talking with, with Shane, Tanya, and Kareem, but I just wanted to give the, the perspective uh, on, the, on, the, on the management side. And I think a lot of it, it's, it's um, again, it's about the clarity and the transparency. Mm -hmm. um, by putting it there, then if, if you just add it on and kind of mark up all your prices for your products 10% instead of just putting the 10% line item, then if people are shopping around and comparing, you know, apples to apples, they're going to look, well, her table is that and yours is 100, hers is 100, yours is 110, mm -hmm. instead of being like, okay, so they're both 100, contingency line item, labor is a little bit different. Then they, it sort of gives um, different perspective. I'm also a huge advocate for, like, event planners to write in their own fee instead of just doing, you know, getting their mark, um, making their fee by marking up my yep. product. Yep. Here ye. Yes, so <laughs> charge for what you're worth and add your exactly. contingency. <laughs> yeah. That is a, that is an entirely, that is an entire can of worms that I am unwilling to open at this point. <laughs> yes. Uh, Probably that, wise. That is, that is, I think those are all, I think those are all really great points. So the, um, I, I, there was another thing that I wanted to talk about really briefly. Uh, and so if you are working as an event manager and you have a producer who is, who is taking sharpening the pencil and coming after your budget and they try and take out your contingency, so if they're trying to take out that line item, um, it, it is almost when to treat even the producer that you work for as a bidding process where you are trying to make arrangements so that you will still have access to contingency funds even after they have sort of ground down what they think your budget should be. And I have been through, and I don't know if any of my former employers are, are happen to be watching this webcast, but I'm sure you are uh, remembering fondly the times that we have fought back and forth about how much should be spent on labor. And, uh, and sometimes uh, it might be a good idea, I'm not saying whether I've done this or not, but to perhaps hide uh, resources in the rest of your budget. And, and so that, you're, that you have, uh, if you're working for producers, particularly hard about certain items, to hide uh, 
contingency funds in other parts of your budget, even that they are unaware of how it's working. So um, that, that is probably a dark and sinister subject that I have just put into the minds of the people watching, but sometimes it's necessary to make sure that you, your budget's hit at the end. So the, uh, does anybody does anybody have any uh, stories they that they they want to share about uh, where they've been protected when they, with their contingency where things have worked out well? I mean, Corinne just yeah, just brought I up one where she went to Calgary and that allowed her to easily go to her client and say that this is our expectation. Shane uh, mentioned his experience at the Capilano Bridge. Does anybody want to want to share anything else? Okay. All right. I've already I've extracted all the data from your brains. <laughs> I, my job is done. Uh, Shayla, did you did you want to? I've been pretty quiet. Did you want to throw any questions forward to our panel? Hey, Tassel, let me call you well, um, I guess like something that goes along con contingency is um, what if your client doesn't agree with? You? What if they don't want that backup? Like, would you still like? I mean, I'm sure you would still have that backup plan. And hide it in the budget. Like, would that be even ethical to do that? But you know what? I, I, I'm happy to answer that because we come across that all the time, where we will include a contingency plan and it comes at a cost, and customers will back away and say, "Oh, you know what? I don't want that." And and our position is 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 quite simple. Then we won't do the job. Uh, we need to make sure that we're protected on our end uh, to deliver what it is that you want as as the customer. The, at the guy that, that's writing the check at the end of the day needs to be happy. And in order for that to happen, there's certain things that I need to be able to provide you that you have to pay for. Um, there are other tenting suppliers out there, and you know we refer them all the time to people who don't want to pay for the service that we offer. Um, and and our, our standpoint is very simple. If you don't want to pay for it and you don't want to um, do it based on the guidelines that we've set out, and again, we've walked them through the process. Uh, if we're setting up something at a big venue, you know our guys know the venue. They're not going to run into any problems there. They're not going to you know spike into the grass and blow a sprinkler line. Yes. Uh, you know, and, and that happens. I mean, that happens more than you'd think. Um, so, it's happened to me. You know, and and you know we we sell our product quite simply. If you, you're hiring us, you are getting, uh, in our opinion, and this may sound incredibly arrogant, and I don't mean it to, but you're, you're getting the best of what we do. It's what we do. It's all we do, right? I don't decor. I don't do. I don't do scenery. We put up tents. We set up tables and chairs, and we get out of your way. Uh, mm -hmm. And for that, uh, there 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 are guidelines by which we need you to abide by to do the order. We won't hide stuff in the order. We won't try and hide costs because. Uh, that will come back and bite you in the ass exponentially, and everybody will start to talk about it, and that can be very, very detrimental uh, to your reputation uh, as a service supplier. Okay. Yeah, like what we would do. Um, I agree, yeah, I agree with Shane. It's, you got to be transparent about it, and and if they chose that they don't want to do it, I I will give them that option, and then it'd be like they will sign a contract that says that they are taking full responsibility for. You know that I will invoice them after the fact then, so they can deal with you know a 10% contingency. That generally I've never ever gone outside of any sort of contingency I've ever put down there because that's re I'm really assessed. I I know up front what I'm. I've got a pretty good idea of what might come up that I might need that contingency for. I've never gone over it. Even if I've gone over a little, I don't. I'll just absorb it. That's fine because you know we've sort of paid it. It's fair, fair. We we all go home happy. But mm -hmm. if they've chosen not to do that and they're they've absolutely They've taken the risk, or they a lot of times clients don't want me to deliver, and they want to pick it up themselves. And it's like, great. So just so you're aware, if you damage this, if you take this tree and you put it on the back of your pickup truck, and all the, the tree blossoms blow off, then you are paying the two thousand dollar replacement cost. You know, even though it's a hundred dollar rental. And once they understand that, then all of a sudden the hundred dollar delivery charge isn't that bad. So yeah. it's it's then they're aware that they're going to get. And when I'm when I'm making that invoice after the fact, if they you know didn't want to do the the contingency up front, and they 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 don't they don't want that level. Then I'm not as generous when I'm making that second when I'm making that after the fact invoice. And the other the other thing that we do uh, to protect ourselves, we take a credit card and 50% non-refundable deposit at the time of booking. So you can you you pay the deposit, you decide that you you know, and we had this happen where a wedding got blown up, and um, you know they you sign a contract that 50% is non-refundable because the tenant. Yeah. You know, I can't re-rent a big tent once it's booked, right? I can't rent it like I can rent the table. Uh, and again, it's about protecting your brand. And once you, and, and it's tough to do when you're when you're getting started in the business. But if people are coming to you and and you're putting together the time and effort to put a contract together and and think things through from start to finish, so you've actually put a lot of thought and time into it, not just throwing a bunch of shit against the wall and said, hey, we hope this works. Um, you take that 50% deposit because that locks them in and it keeps them serious. Uh, and you keep that credit card on file because at the end of the day, there's always stuff that goes wrong. 
uh, and good luck collecting if you don't have a credit card on file. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, I'm impressed by even um, designers that they won't even, you don't even get a proposal until you've given the deposit. So. Yeah, yeah, no, I for love sure. it. Because yeah. it's a lot of work, right? And people use it to shop around. I mean, we'll happily provide you with a quote for a tent. Uh, and I tell people when they come to us for a quote, we know they're going to go shop it around to Phoenix or Aardvark or whoever the hell's out there. Um, and I tell them, Our, ours is going to come in 15 to 20 percent higher. So, you know, just so you know, we're going to be more expensive. Uh, but here's what you're going to get. Yeah, and it does pay for. You, you're going to get what you pay for. And, and at the end of the day, we've picked up more business by people falling on their face, yeah. uh, over promising and under delivering, um, than uh, than by knocking on doors. And and I and I think that the the I think the you know that I think that that's all really. I mean, Tandy, did you want to did you want to add to that? Because there was we had we had if you don't want the contingency, um, then we we don't have a deal. We have if you don't want the contingency, you got to sign a piece of paper. It says we offered it to you. Turn it down. Do you have do you have an alternative method? No, it's just it's just interesting listening to everybody because everyone's got such you know it's, there's a lot of there's a lot of same that's going on in there. I mean, my biggest thing in my world is. Um, um, home-based chair cover companies and you know like as I tell people I say so do you want to meet somebody who has everything stored in their garage or do you want to go to Starbucks to have your meeting to you know see there's see a sample or whatever like you like you come to my store you have full disposal of you know everything that we own we have a warehouse you can see how we store how we hang like we we're very transparent in that way but you're like with what Shane said, you're going to pay more because you know we never we, we don't run out. You know, there's lots of things I don't not show up. <laughs> that I mean that happens. I've had calls where the decorator has, like you said, overpromised and underdelivered, and they don't they just didn't show up, or they didn't or they overextended themselves. They took on too many weddings and they only had so much product. Where yeah. that doesn't happen with that. So, but you 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 pay more for that, and people have that comfort level of like I say I say to women, are you going to buy your wedding dress from somebody's garage, or from Starbucks? Me, having a meeting at Starbucks, and they just sort of look at me like no. And I said, well, then why would you spend this kind of money on you know that that similar you know type of need? So that's excellent. That's, thank you, and 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 thank you, Karine and and, Shay, and and Shayla. That was an excellent question. Thanks. Uh, so I and I think that there there is a really there's a really core value there for when you are operating in business and industry that it is okay to have boundaries. It is okay to say to clients that this is the deal that we have to have for us to work together. And it's whether we need to sign a piece of paper or whether it's just we have to have a contingency built in. And if not, then we can't work together. And if they walk away, trust me, you didn't want them as a client exactly. because they are. Yeah. you have different values and there are different things that are important to you and important to them and if they walk away you are saving yourself the grief of trying to work out those different value systems as you go along in your relationship. So there, yeah. so all, uh, both of those ideas are uh, they're all great landscapes but it's uh, I guess the, the, the key takeaway that I want to sort of underline there is that it is important to have boundaries and it is important to have values and to, to treat your business in that fashion and so I think that I think that that's that's all really great advice. One so, of the other uh, things, oh, sorry, Jason. One of the other things that we look at is 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 profit margin, right? If you're running a business, uh, you need to know what your, your your net profit margin is, and that that uh, is the amount of money that you're taking out of the trade uh, after all your expenses are paid. And for us, when we're looking at a job and we're humming and hawing of, you know, do we take it? Do we not? Even though the gross sales may be, you know, uh, out of this world, we look at the net effect and what we're going to be able to take out of that job at the end of the day. And if it doesn't meet our our financial threat threshold. Pardon me. Uh, we'll walk away. Yeah. Because if it's already you know five to ten points below where we needed to be to even consider the job, you can best believe that it's going to get ratcheted down through grinding and, and other you know yep. screw ups and by another five up. to ten percent. And yeah. all of a sudden you're underwater twenty percent, and yet you've landed this great job, but you haven't made any money. And yeah. really at the end of the day, uh, that's kind of why we're we're doing this is to make a living. Yeah. And the and the and the bigger gigs, they will have the greater fluctuations too. Oh, big time. big time. Yeah. There is. It's it's a it's a madhouse. So uh, that's thank you. Um, is Emily? Did you want to contribute in on this? You've been so quiet. I know you. I know there's all kinds of madness going on in the. In the there's there. saws now. There's <laughs> all right. So in that case, on is, that Tom, note, is Tom rebuilding that space again? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So Emily's with Lounge. See. Huh? Oh. Oh, that's magical. Okay, so we're gonna mute you. And so I'm going to wrap this up, unless anybody has anything else they want to share.
Excellent. Well, that was magnificent. Uh, as I said at the beginning, talking about contingencies, this is one of my favorite parts of event planning. This is the working out the contingency and trying to figure out how you protect your relationship, your crew, your bottom line, your gear, your reputation. This is all built into this, and it is a fundamental uh, systemic uh, issue that, that we need to address as event managers and event suppliers and, and, and contributors. So uh, so this has been a lot of fun for me. So I, I, I hope for, the, for everyone else this has all been fun and entertaining. Uh, I'd like to thank our audience for, uh, for, for, uh, for, for watching. I'd very much like to thank our lovely panel. Again, we have Kareen Kessel. Uh, she's the president of ISIS Vancouver. And with Greenscapes, we have Emily McDonald quietly in the background. She is a VP of communications for ISIS Vancouver, and she is with LoungeWorks. We have Shane Bowser, and he is with Salapex, Salmon and Apex <laughs> Hybrid. Uh, and he is an ISIS member. We have Tanya Newman. She is the uh, uh, former pre president of, of ISIS Vancouver, head of ch ch and of course she reels. She is rep and and graduate in, in new entries right now. So uh, connect with us through Twitter at ISIS Vancouver. Uh, please post on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. Uh, if you'd like to participate in a panel. You can email us at hangouts at isisvancouver.com. If you have questions after the fact, please feel free to send in emails. We'll do our best to answer them. So ISIS is the International Special Event Society. We have chapters worldwide, and you can find us at isis.com and, of course, on Google. Uh, if you work in special events or want to get in the event industry, we are a good bunch of people to know. Uh, ISIS Vancouver has many events which are open to the public. Please come out and see us. Uh, you can find our events at isisvancouver.com. Uh, come up and say, to, say hi to us. We actually we love to meet people who have uh, seen us in the Hangouts. Uh, so, uh, as I said, if you're, even if you're not nicest, we're a very friendly bunch of people. So most of our Twitter accounts are in our lower third, which is down here. Somewhere. And uh, so, everyone, I'd like to uh, say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. There we go.